Hi guys, this is the channel where we talk about toys, gadgets, books, wristwatches, and all the things that guys love to collect. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the best watch to take with you when you're on holiday. Welcome to Timberwolf's Den. So in keeping with the tradition of YouTube channels that I admire and that I like to watch, I am going to do a wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing the Omega Speedmaster Automatic, also known as the Speedmaster Reduced. Uh, you could say it's the younger brother of its more famous uh, older brother, the Omega Speedmaster Professional, also known as the Moonwatch. So let's talk about the best wristwatch to take with you when you're on holiday. Now I just returned from a short holiday in New Zealand with my wife. Uh, and I actually brought two wristwatches with me, not really unusual for, for me. Uh, but I brought my uh, Fortis Cosmonaut Chronograph and this watch, the Boulder Explorer GMT. Now before I get into the watch, I just want to talk quickly about uh, the awesome trip that we had in New Zealand. Now, the, probably the, the, the highlight of the trip uh, was when we went on a whale and dolphin safari. And yes, we actually did see some whales. Now, Auckland is probably the only city in the world that I can think of where you can get on a boat and uh, it, from the middle of the city and go out and within you know, an hour or so, you're actually in territory where you might actually encounter live whales. Now, in order to go whale watching in New Zealand, you gotta go to the New Zealand Maritime Museum. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to the Auckland Whale and Dolphin Safari and they will take you out for a four hour uh, tour to see the Haraki Gulf, and that's where you have the best chance of seeing whales and dolphins. Now remember that whales and dolphins are wild animals, so there's no guarantee that you'll actually see them, but there's a very good chance that you will on this tour. So as I mentioned, less than an hour out of the harbor, we actually encountered a pod of whales. Uh, they were 15 adults and calves uh, with the alpha uh, being over seven meters long I mean, you could tell because as he swam past the boat his dorsal fin would stick out of the water almost like a meter and a half. Now you can tell these are really intelligent creatures because they'll actually swim up to the boat and check you out um, and you can tell that they're just there because they're very curious about who you are and what you're doing there. Now even if you watch a lot of TV shows and documentary films, you know, Discovery Channel, Animal Planet, etc., etc. Nothing really prepares you for how magnificent these creatures are up close uh, when they're in their natural habitat. Anyway, guys, enough about New Zealand. Let's talk about the GMT watch. Now, you can tell a GMT watch because of its added complication. That is the fourth hand that tells the time in 24-hour scale. So that means it does one revolution around the dial in 24 hours instead of every 12 hours, uh, which is what your typical hour hand does on a watch. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that GMT watches have that bezel in a 24-hour scale. Now, the bezels can either be monochromatic or they can come in two colors, one to differentiate daytime and nighttime. Now probably the most famous of GMT watches is the uh, Rolex GMT Master. And the most popular variant of it is called the Pepsi because of the red and blue color scheme on the bezel. Now personally, I prefer something called a Batman bezel uh, and that has a blue and black combination on the bezel. Um, I don't know, what can I say? I just like Batman. Now, of course, not everybody can afford a Rolex GMT Master. So today I'm gonna demonstrate how to use a GMT watch with this watch. And again, this is the Boulder uh, Explorer GMT. Now, Boulder is of course a micro brand. And I really like micro brands because they allow you to get a really high quality watch with excellent design excellent material and craftsmanship for a fraction of the price of a luxury watch. Now this particular watch I purchased for under $300 from Watch Gauge. Uh, that's an excellent online retailer that sells uh, micro brands like Boulder and NTH. Um, I'll put a link below in the description. 
Now, let me quickly introduce you to the features of the Boulder Explorer GMT. <clears throat> now, I was talking earlier about excellent craftsmanship and materials. Uh, this watch is made, this, the, the case of this watch is made from marine grade uh, steel and finished in this bead blasted black matte uh, finish. Uh, that's hardened mineral crystal there. Um, the dimensions of the watch are uh, 42 millimeters uh, in diameter, uh, 12 and a half millimeters high, uh, 50 millimeters lug to lug, and that is a uh, 20 millimeter lug width. Um, and you can tell there by the movement, by the motion of the second hand that this is a quartz. This is actually a Swiss made Ronda quartz movement. Now let me show you how to use the GMT uh, features of this watch. Now I talked earlier about the bezel in a 24 hour scale. Uh, what actually differentiates GMTs isn't just the bezel, but the fourth hand here, you can see in orange, uh, that is an hour hand, but reads, uh, but an hour hand that reads uh, the time on a 24 hour scale. So that means it makes its revolution um, not in 12 hours, but in 24 hours. Other GM, there are different kinds of GMT watches. Some, as I mentioned, uh, are distinguished by their bezels. There are other GMTs that actually have the 24 hour uh, scale printed on the dial itself or in, even in the chapter ring. Um, but what's important is that it's this uh, fourth hand here that actually allows you to use the GMT function. So let's say you've arrived in New Zealand from Singapore and uh, you know that the local time in Singapore is 10 a.m. because that's the, that's the time that you've got uh, on your watch. When you land, you realize that because New Zealand is four hours ahead of Singapore, um, that it is actually 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So what you do is you've got this um, screw down crown here, which you pull out. So you pull out to its second click. Uh, that allows you to set the time and the time is set pretty much just like any other watch right so let's set that to 2 p.m. here and you can see as I'm moving this the orange hand or the 24 hour hand is also moving but at a slower pace than the regular hour hand so now what you do is you put this uh, so you're in this you're in the second position you now uh, uh, click this so you push that back in and instead of pulling it out to the second position you now pull it out to the first position and you've got to remember that what you're doing is you've got to rotate the crown in a counterclockwise motion because if you if you rotate in the clockwise motion um, you're adjusting the date there as you can see in the window below but if you rotate uh, the crown in the clock in the counterclockwise motion that allows you to control that 24 hour hand here and so what and since you know that it was 10 a.m. in Singapore 2 p.m. now in New Zealand you just align that hand to the 10 position there and so that that now allows you to track the time in Singapore so wherever uh, that orange hand is pointed on this 24 hour dial on this 24 hour uh, bezel that is the local time in Singapore. So it's that simple. Uh, there are, of course, more complex um, GMT watches. As I mentioned, some have additional markings uh, on the dial or even on the chapter ring, allowing you to, to, tr to track more than two time zones. Uh, that's much more complicated, but for today, uh, this is just the very basic function of a GMT watch. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Please remember to like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the Wand Company Star Trek Communicator. Until then, see you guys later.